Hello and welcome to Trashy Trashy, where we take a dumpster dive on this week's garbage people and a look at all the trashiest news stories. My name is Erica and I'm your host. My name is Cassandra and I'm your other host. You really, I liked your cadence just now. I've been working on it. Thank you. I've been watching some YouTube videos of journalists and radio DJs. I was going to say it, it was giving journalists, which is what we both are, respected. Respected. Mm-hmm. Journalists. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you a question just yeah. for fun. Yeah. What did you have for breakfast this morning? A piece of pound cake. Girl, and I a had monster. French toast. <gasps> Ooh, sugar babies. Aren't we just the sweetest? Well, I looked up and I just was – I was eating breakfast. It's quite early in the morning, listeners, just some context. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm a – I'm not so much an early riser since I'm not a farmer anymore. And – you always wake up early for me, which is really sweet and I appreciate it. Guys, I love you. Got to look good for my woman. <laughs> but I don't have any – I was like, oh, I don't have any food. <laughs> I had like some stuff to make a smoothie – but I didn't have all the juice, the, you know, like the milk or water substitute. And I didn't want to drink it with water. And so I looked and I, I dug in and I said, well, got this prepackaged pound cake from when I made strawberry shortcake months ago. And there I was drinking it with a sugar-free Red Bull. So everything's about balance. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I just, I've been eating like very healthy breakfasts lately. Mm -hmm. And I've been up since 4.30. I'm not good at going back to sleep if Mm -hmm. I've been awoken at night. And I had to pee this. I had to pee. Okay. I'm I'm telling to you straight, listeners, I had to pee last night at this morning, I guess at 4.30. And then it just, I couldn't, couldn't go back to sleep. So I've been up for days at this point. And, Mm -hmm. uh, I had time to do something as frivolous as make grilled cheese. Wow. I even made like a batch of iced tea for me to enjoy later. Okay. And I like was writing this morning. I was so productive this morning. The only thing that I did wrong was I forgot that we agreed to record this morning. And <laughs> I, I did make us start 30 minutes late <laughs> despite despite being super awake for a very long time. But, you know, I digress. I got to know babe. Why are you mm-hmm. trash? So I I feel like I, you know, I kind of shared about like oversharing. We've talked about like those anecdotes where it's like, oh, midway through, everybody needs to be on board and be cool with this so that this is a charming story, not a, have you talked to your therapist about this story? Not like a, did any of these people end up in jail kind of story. Right. So those are, you know, those happen frequently. <laughs> And I was reminded of a time, and and both of you and I are both nosy bitches. We put our our little the snipper nosiest. What what's that text message happening on the plane? Like we, our neighbors are doing what? We are the nosies, straight up drooling over any information of strangers I can get. I one time, so I was in a pool this summer. I don't want to brag. I stood in chlorinated water one time, you know, (laughs) what can I say? Wow. And being the nosy person that I am, like always, I overheard a woman telling a story. She's a group of friends, right? And just like listeners, gold, like earmuffs alert. Okay. This is, you have kids in the car. Don't ever listen to this, but this is one of those stories. And I sat there and I'm listening and this woman is telling a story. And she's talking about having sex with her husband. There's probably like five or six people gathered around, mixed company, men, women, all this. So I'm going to have sex with her husband and then blowing her husband immediately after. And she says, again, to the group and not just like quietly, like where the pool can hear her. And she's like, yeah. So I started blowing him and then it's like, that's how I found out I was on my period. I got that taste in my mouth. Mm. And I immediately was repulsed, but then whipped out my phone and was like, gotta write that down. (laughs) Things I overhear and then think, want to remember this, instead of being like, oh, 
I hope I never think of that again, disgust me. It truly disgusts me. And I'm trash that- because I collect these stories in a way. I wonder how she's doing. She Not- seemed to be doing fine. That, I mean, look, things happen, right? But that's like – yeah. That doesn't seem like a pool story. No. But, you know, who who are we to judge? Because we've told horrible yeah. stories on this podcast. Horrible. To a bigger audience because you better fucking believe that we have more than five people listening mm-hmm. per week. I was dog sitting for someone in an apartment complex where it kind of all opened into the center, but people would just kind of leave their windows open. And this woman's on the phone, window open, and she's like, are you fucking kidding me you don't think the gift i got you is good enough because you have to assemble it and i've got the dogs and of course my eyeline goes immediately to the window (laughs) and then she sees me see and then she looks at me we lock eye contact and i freeze for a sec like like a raccoon in headlights i'm like they've been caught as a trash panda yeah but you might be just, within your own yeah. home, but if your windows are open and you're screaming, your windows are open, babe. I just I looked down and I just started doing something with the dogs. So was like, and, and pretended to adjust my headphones. Like I didn't hear anything. No, of course I did. Of course I did. Don't ever assemble a gift for me if you buy something that needs to be assembled. By the way, <laughs> yeah. I I might be taking her side on that, but it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, why are you trash? <laughs> well, so I was up so early and working on something Mm -hmm. you know writing Mm -hmm. and a joke came to me as i was working on it being like oh it'd be really funny if this this character i'm writing was rumored to be dating someone very famous and you know just classic comedy classic humor yeah (laughs) like laugh haha's 101 and I realized as I sat there trying to think like, okay, well, what would be funny? Who would be funny? I was like, okay, what if they were rumored to be dating Shakira? And then I realized I looked at a clock and a calendar and was like, it's 2023. Is Shakira famous enough for this to be funny? Like, and then I found myself being like, oh my God, who, who is famous (laughs) <laughs> i don't i yeah. don't know i don't think i know who's famous yeah and then i was like am i gonna have to type into google who is famous like i i genuinely don't uh, yeah it, it, timothy but i need a, a, a woman sorry to you know perpetuate straight agenda but like i'm writing a character who happens to be straight or is he? I don't know. But like, I'm typing in right now, who is famous? Yeah. Did you see the and, clip? Oh, sorry. See, now, yeah. what comes up is the word celebrity. Yeah. And I recognize these people. I see Alicia Keys twice, okay. which is weird. Um, the Queen of England. Jesus. R.I.P. Both of those. The, the Rock. And Liana Lewis, which I'll say this, the fact that I recognize Liana Lewis, who I don't believe has put out a song that's been popular, at least in the United States, since 2012, I'll say, but I don't know who's popular right now, tells you everything that you need to know about like when my brain shut off. Do you know who Liana Lewis is? Um, no, I, I mean, I feel like I do, but keep I don't bleeding, no, no, keep, keep, yeah. Keep ble- like, yeah, but that song was like, that's, oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. That song came out in 2007. Yeah. It's worse than I thought. <laughs> there was a clip that went around on from watch what happens live with Andy Cohen that went around all the socials and it's, no, I know tro- who, the, I know who he is. Yes. So Andy Cohen, God, and then eh. it's, it's Reba McIntyre. And okay, Troy Sivan. No, I don't know who that is. He's a youth. He's a very popular singer, youth, homosexual man. Did a, a really cool music video recently where he was cross-dressing and also playing himself. He's just very hot. Again, I don't know who he is except for through this song, right? I've heard the name. But again, like water through an hourglass. It's just gone. Sands through the time, whatever. 
And Andy Cohen asked Reba McIntyre about texting with Dolly Parton. Dolly doesn't text. She faxes, whatever. And somebody asked Reba, like a, a listener writes in and asks Reba McIntyre, have you ever done poppers? Reba McIntyre, Oklahoma girl, was like, I don't know if I know what poppers are. What, what's that? And Troy Sivan just leans over and is like, I'll tell you later. <laughs> That's oh. how I know him. But he's on the top of the charts as I was just looking up. I got into I, a fight online <laughs> on Reddit about what the difference between A-list and famous is. Kim Kardashian, and this is no hate to the Kardashian clan, whatever. Why? She is not an A-lister. She is extremely famous. Those two things are fucking different. And I will die on that hill. But yeah, I don't know who's famous. I I don't know who's famous. This list on Mm L.com is the new actors, singers, and designers, and models who will rule is like what the headline is. And number one is Halle Bailey. Yes. Who she is Ariel. Yes. Adorable. So I know that. Raul, Raul Lopez. I apologize. I have no idea who you are. I don't. I think he might be a designer. Okay. India Amar Tifio. Again, I, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I'm not trying to be daft. I have no idea who you are. I guess she's the lead in Bridgerton. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, Nakuti Gatwa. I, you know, I've been living in a cave for eight years. I'm, I apologize. I just have no idea who you are. He, that is an actor. He's from Sex Education, mm-hmm. and I guess one of the newer Doctor Who's. A lot of these people seem to be famous on Netflix, yeah. which maybe has something to. Do. You know what? You know who I know? Billie Eilish. I'll just stick with that. Billie <laughs> Eilish is famous. That's funny for that joke. Yeah, I'm I, so sorry. I, 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 I've just woken up from a coma. I I have no idea who you are. No offense. <laughs> you know what I don't like is when people can't admit that they're wrong. Like if anyone is listening mm-hmm. and being like, I knew who all those people were. Admit you're wrong. And the people in this next story, I don't think that they're admitting that they were just wrong. Yeah. Yeah, this I first agree. story, I should say. Let's get into this first story from the HuffPost.com sent in by Tina Curry. <laughs> A Georgia man was stunned by a $1.4 million speeding ticket, below the headline, of course. Officials later clarified, though. I just picture that, what is that Sammy Hagar song where it's like, I can't drive 55, 55. Now, Sammy Hagar, I know. Yeah. (laughs) He was famous, like, way before we were even alive. Yeah. I think there's a David Spade joke where it's like talking about Van Halen. He's like Van Halen, not Van Hagar. And that's kind of the context that I know. (laughs) Van Halen and Sammy Hagar is through that joke. Was Sammy Hagar the second singer? The second singer for Van Halen. Okay. And David Lee Roth first. Yeah. But he's saying (laughs) David Lee Roth, not Sammy Hagar. Again, that joke was from like 1992. And even then it was old, I'm sure. But. This Georgia man got this $1.4 million speeding ticket. They, The figures say it was just a placeholder, not the actual fine. It was going See, 90 and a 55, though. 50? Yeah, I get 55. it. I get it. I'm going to do that now, too. <laughs> is that even, like, cool? Because, like, 55 isn't that, like, fast. So the fact that that's, like, the <laughs> basis of the song. Anyways, it doesn't matter. We we This is not Van Halen, Van Halen. This is trashy, trashy. But I have an issue with this because I feel like the Savannah officials aren't just like copping up to a mistake. They right. said that this figure was reflected by reflected a placeholder that was automatically generated by e citation software used by the local recorder's court. Yeah. Okay, fine. But like also, why are we using e citation software mm-hmm. to come up with a, our ticket amounts and also why doesn't this e-citation software know that in the state of georgia a fine cannot exceed a thousand dollars well and here's the thing this guy is being held to where he can either pay the fine or appear in court in december two months from now 
and where the judge will determine what the actual fine is. So the guy's like, hey, this placeholder's obviously insane, but I can't wait till December. Maybe he doesn't live in Georgia. Maybe he's like, I'm in Rhode Island. I have to come back here to figure out if I owe a million dollars or 400. Yeah. So apparently the court is now currently working on adjusting the placeholder language to avoid any confusion. Okay. Why don't you just adjust the placeholder? Like, why can't you just admit that your podunk computer put a decimal in the wrong place and this person got a fucked up ticket? I don't think that he has a leg to stand on if you go, oh my God, I'm sorry that there was a mistake. Here's your real ticket. I don't think he's going to be like, well, because my first ticket was wrong. Like, it's like, no, he doesn't have, like, that doesn't hold up. But Mm -hmm. the fact that they're like not admitting that, no, no, that's, no, the computer was right. Well, maybe we'll just, we'll make sure it's more clear to people that it's placeholders. I'm just going to say this. Boomers have a hard time, and I know we come down a lot on the generations on this pod recently, but boomers have a hard time admitting that they've done something wrong. Girl. And the person in our next story, bit of a boomer himself. From NBC2.com, a 77-year-old man from the Villages, infamous Florida retirement community, arrested after finding $1,800 worth of illegal erectile dysfunction pills. I I mean, I mean, there's outrage in the community that he was arrested. <laughs> That's what's hilarious yeah. is that, so he's obviously the Viagra guy yeah. because these people from Florida are actively voting against universal health care while also mm-hmm. having to take steps to buy their prescriptions illegally mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. Uh, in Mexico or whatever they choose to do. So make that make sense. And their pill guy got arrested because he's a drug dealer. And they're like, really? <laughs> You're going to arrest Gary? <laughs> I need Gary. Okay. You know, what's funny to me is the gas station pills. I worked at a small town convenience store and we would sell Your corn dogs, your Dr. Peppers, a bag of chips, candy, whatever. But at the counter, there's always that one like little stand of like horny goat and like these pills, these supplements. I guess sex machine, sex machine, horny goats. But they're just vitamins, right? I'm sure they're just vitamins, which are unregulated by the FDA. You could fucking put horse piss in one and be like. Thumbs up, you know. That's pure oyster juice. Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> I I just remember the whole time I was working there, you know, I was a kid, and I'm just thinking, please don't let anyone I know ever come in and try to buy these. <laughs> I did just, anyone ever buy them? I never sold one. I mean, famously, I did sell Spark Energy, alcoholic energy drink to anyone who was coming in because I didn't well, realize it was alcoholic. But I just remember thinking, please don't let any of my dad's friends come in and try to buy like sex potions. Please don't let my superintendent of my school come in and try to buy <laughs> sex potions from the gas station. Well, condoms, they stopped selling condoms in our at the Tiger Paw because people would steal them. And I'm like, maybe then you just give them away so you don't have a bunch of teenage pregnancies. But no, that's. That's too advanced. We can't get into that. That's simply cool it with your socialism and your <laughs> women's rights. So the villages is a place where senior romances bloom like f- spring flowers, and you know what's not blooming like spring flowers are old dudes peepees. They mm-hmm. need a little bit of uh, help. Yeah, and. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this he was the guy to do it, but he got the pills without a prescription from a licensed doctor with plans to redistribute the drugs in and outside of the state. He really let them know mm-hmm. his whole plan. He probably they can't his- admit that they're wrong, but they will tell you like Bond villain level details about everything they did plan to do. True. <laughs> well, he's tied up on a board and there's a laser moving slowly up towards his testicles sure and he's like 
telling the whole plan. Yeah, absolutely. He he probably hatched this plan on the golf course. Oh, well, then our next story from golfdigest.com might interest you. Oh, a man arrested on the golf course during the middle of his round for allegedly defrauding golfers. What was he doing? Wearing tall socks? I don't know. Is that a thing? I don't know. I don't know shit about golf. <laughs> just what was he like doing? Something. Was saying that he his par was three when everyone knows that he's got a two handicap. What, what, what was his birdie with his hand car and his cavy? Insane terminology. Very Scottish game. Like just <sighs> blubberish <laughs> for the terms. <laughs> So a golfer was arrested in the middle of his round, no, in San Ramon, California, and his alleged crime was cheating, kind of. Basically, what this guy would do is he would make a habit of playing the local courses and kind of victimizing the people he played with. Now, I do know enough about golf that if you show up, they like to... They like to bunch people together. You have to have what's called a tea time. Okay, Erica? Okay. What's that? Uh, so I have to mansplain golf to you. So you have a tea time, right? And let's say that your tea time is for 9 a.m. You could golf solo. You okay. could golf with a friend. Okay. You could golf with two friends. Ooh. But basically, my understanding is, is that they like to have at least four people uh-huh. on each tea time in order to – kind of keep the game moving. So if you go solo, you are most definitely going to be paired with at least one, two, three other people. So this guy would go golfing solo in order to meet different people and scam the shit out of them. Yeah. Probably fucking them in the bushes, right? Oh, is this a different kind of scam? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still in the Viagra story. No, yeah, I and I completely understand. Um, I went golfing once and I had to pee really bad, and so I did have to go into some bushes and pee. It, I, and I don't think I was the only person who ever did that, or you know, went back there at all. I was but, forced. I was forced to golf for a work event. Me and my youthful coworker, and we neither one of us wanted to go, but we were forced to. So we went to Goodwill mm-hmm. and found polo shirt matching polo shirts and. <laughs> Wore them and really made a farce out of it to the point where they never asked us to golf again. A weaponized incompetence, as mm-hmm. they say. Uh, so this guy would pretend to represent Titleist, which is a big golf brand, and he would oh. basically be selling golf equipment to the people he was playing with under different aliases. And he would collect the money and be like, I got your contact info. I'll send you all this Titleist gear. You're really good, by the way. Great swing. Oh, good ass. Nice dick. Right? That's and, smart. Yeah. And then he would obviously never give said things to them. And so one guy got defrauded out of $2,000 oh. being promised high-end golf clubs. That's – I mean, I'm going to say something. Okay. And I don't know how this is going to land amongst – the trashy trashy fans but oh i think it's gonna about land how it's gonna land amongst me i don't give a shit if golfers get defrauded it's the most boring game alive <laughs> i'd rather watch competitive paint drying i think that women in the pandemic women be shopping as we know women be shopping. um mm-hmm. and they took to Baking bread. I think baking <laughs> bread maybe crossed over into I think it was both all genders. genders. Yeah. But I feel like men in particular in the pandemic, golf became like what a lot of people did. As someone who has met men and who's also uh, dated a little bit, sorry, <laughs> dated a little bit in the beginning Brag. of the pandemic before – meeting my future ex-boyfriend and now current husband, I was like, okay, every woman I'm talking to and dating seems to be baking a lot. And every man I've talked to and dating, they all golf. And they all had the same story of like, yeah, I just got into it in the pandemic because it's something that my dad did. And also it's a way to be outside and do something. Yeah. Yeah. So... You know, I mean, but I, I'm still like on board with you. It doesn't perturb me per se because mm-hmm. 
golfing is overall, with the exception of some lower cost or public courses, it is definitely like a very rich, predominantly a very white elitist sport. sport. The very fact that Tiger um, Woods exclusive was a big deal. Yeah. Is, he's extremely talented, but it was also it was always extremely talented, comma for um blah, blah. you know what I mean? Like that was always kind of the implication, at least when I was a kid, I felt that way, you know? It was sure. like can you believe this guy's good at golf? <laughs> <sighs> he, uh, this guy also um was like when he was like nice swing fabulous dick, whatever. He was also stealing their wallets. So oopsie I poopsie. Ass- I assume you bump you bump into other golfers, right? It was easy to do, you know, like in a crowd, you just kind of like, no. oops, no, there's not like a lot of contact in golf. Again, I've only done it the one time. No, maybe in the golf cart. Cause, cause that's the thing too. If you go solo, you might get, you, well, you unless you're going to walk the course, you're mm-hmm. getting put into a golf cart with another person too. So like you, you get to know them, but I, you know what? I need the listeners to get to know something else. Why? Why don't we listen to one of these lovely sponsors that allows us to continue the Trashy Trashy podcast and maybe you can learn something from that. Okay. Do you need more trash in your life? I'd say better in my life than dumped in the ocean. Well, Trashy Trashy is now on Patreon. Oh, yay. We have ad-free episodes, bonus content, an exclusive RSS link, outtakes, photos, and more. And with tiers starting at only $1.99 a month, you'll be the trashiest person on your block. It's a great opportunity to show your support for this podcast and to skip hearing ads like this. So get on over to patreon.com slash trashy trashy podcast and start subscribing today. Again, that's patreon.com slash trashy trashy podcast and we'll see you behind the paywall. And we're back. Now, Cass, what's up? You're vegan now. Uh, yeah. Ish. <laughs> but <laughs> mostly. <laughs> The one thing I do know about veganism, yeah, plant-based, whatever it is, is that Oreos are vegan. Yes. Does that they upset are. me in some way that I thought it was a milk-based product? Sure. But the fact that they are happy to include everyone in them, you know? It's so weird, that thought process. No offense. It's weird, that thought process of being like, what? There ain't no milk in this? Well, it's Yuck. just that it's – when I hear cream – I think a milk-based thing, right? I, I don't know. Guys, this is you, about the science. Okay, yes. So uh, MIT, a very famous science college. This is, of course, from scoop.upworthy.com. MIT, some some of the greatest minds in the world, you know, they've got to do something while they're getting their PhD. They can't just jump straight to curing cancer, I suppose. Mm-mm. And so this PhD student decided to study whether or not an Oreo can be evenly split. Did you ever did you ever do the twist off with the Oreos with a friend? I'm sure I have. I mean, but you know, yeah. I, I mostly ate Oreos solo. I did but I, I would still break them apart. I, I would break them apart myself. Yeah, I didn't I never did it with a friend. I would just do it with myself and be like, this is what it'll be like when I have friends. Doop, doop. Infamous, infamous scene. <gasps> Of course. In the pilot episode of Friends. Oh. When we know, like, Rachel has moved in with Monica, and we know that Ross had feelings for her and stuff, Mm -hmm. and there's one cookie left, and they split it, and it's an Oreo, and they split it in half. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That always comes to mind. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, if that's not romantic, I don't know what it is, bitch. Yeah. We were on a break with the cookies. So these cookies, <laughs> that's like two things I know about friends. These cookies, <laughs> notoriously hard to split, but these researchers are like, you know what, bitch? We're getting to it. So she was, the PhD researcher said, I was personally motivated by a desire to solve a challenge that had puzzled me as a child, how to open an Oreo and get cream evenly on both wafers. Also, my grandma had cancer. I have to solve this one first, though. Is that in there? No, that was... Uh, that you were was editorializing. Editorializing. Okay, I was like, I missed that. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Mm. So she's like, if the wafer... You know, it's like, it's got to be the perfect exposure. Because if you get a bite, a wafer alone is too dry. But if you dunked it in milk, then the water... You know, the, the wafer would fall apart. 
So she's like, when I came to MIT, I learned how to use a laboratory chrometer, which twists a fluid sample between parallel discs to measure the viscosity. That's a direct quote. I originally used our rheometer to test a carbon nanotube based ink I was designing to 3D print flexible electronics. But one day, I realized I had the tools and knowledge to finally solve the challenge with Oreos. Uh, you know, because uh, she doesn't work for the government, I'm going to let it go. Yeah. Yeah. Spend but that, spend that MIT was, money. <laughs> if I was her parents, I'd be like, what yeah. the fuck? Yeah. Are you doing what's what? So what? Nan was the Nan's conclusion? Got cancer and what are you doing? <laughs> what was the conclusion? Like, we'll skip yeah. all the science talk. Of course. Of what's course. the deal? Can you split it evenly or not? Yeah. So Oreos aren't filled with cream. C-R-E-A-M, but creme. C-R-E-M-E, which is actually more of a frosting than a cream. In reality, it's similar to fluids, though. So basically, it's almost impossible. Basically, it sounds like if the only way you can get it like as close to even as possible is if the cream cuts, and so mm -hmm. that each person is left with a half exposed wafer, wafer yeah. and half covered wafer. That's the only way you're going to get even. Otherwise, someone is just getting cookie, and Oreo. The company, mm -hmm. their vice president, Justin Parnell, of vice president of marketing and strategy. I bet he's cool. I bet he is. <laughs> he, he chimed in and he said, many have tried to figure out this very question. Rest assured, there isn't a secret that we've been hiding, but none have gone to such playful lengths as this PhD student and her team of researchers. We want to extend a huge congratulations to these brilliant minds and applaud their dedication to our twisting ritual. I guess what else can he say yeah. when such a thing comes across his desk? And like, hey, we're, Justin, we're going to need you to speak on this. Oh, I got to write a statement. I, you know, so figuring out that Oreos are in fact filled with cream, C-R-E-M-E, -E, and not dairy, C-R-E-A-M, brings me to the next story. Now, Cassandra, I have a question. This is some context I'm set up. Have you ever been to the state of Oklahoma? I don't think no. I've ever asked you. No, I haven't, but I have been to Texas, which, so like, just okay. FYI, like, yeah. if you're going to be like, have you ever been to this place? Like, the answer is yes. It was just in Texas. Oh, okay. So Brahms is a fast food joint, but it's also based around a dairy. So Brahms is an Oklahoma staple. Found in Oklahoma. I've been to the dairy on a field trip when I was in elementary school. Brahms has the most incredible ice cream shakes, burgers, but everything they do is only within a 300 mile radius from their dairy. So if they can't get it to you in like five hours or under, they won't ship it. So that's their so problem. Denton, Texas. That's with a, well, that's within the five hours. So it'll work. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But um, this uh, – Brahms, it's a great, great – I mean, anytime I go to Oklahoma, there's at least three Brahms trips. doesn't matter if I'm there for a day. We got to make sure we get it in, right? Now, I've had some decent burgers from Brahms, but the best burger I ever had in my life was when I was in the seventh grade labor auction. Nope, sorry. Seventh grade bonus auction at the Comanche County Fair. Now, had I hey, eaten in 10 hours? No. Are you going to edit that out or can yeah. I ask you what the fuck a labor auction is? Because okay. that sounds like slavery. Well, yeah. so okay, so there's multiple auctions <laughs> I participated in in school. So there was the bonus auction. So we would do the ex exhibition of animals, right? The the shows, the fair, the state fair. When uh -huh, you come and uh -huh, see, you see uh -huh, the animals, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. We would have one for our county. We would do the regular. That was like on a Monday. On Friday, all of the different animals—the cows, the sheep, the pigs, chickens, whatever—there was then what we called a bonus auction, and this is where you honorarily sold your animal and somebody bought it for, let's say, like $500. Now you get that $500. It's just a bonus to the kids, basically. It's like, hey, congratulations, here's your money. Then people would do add-ons to this. So then I would say, so Cassandra, you bought my pig for an honorary $300, right? I don't I actually have to give you donated $300 to a child. You yes, just okay. gave me $300 to continue my agriculture education. But then uh -huh. businesses, let's say like the bricklayer and Brahms and the insurance agency would then do add-ons. So 
$100 from Glover Insurance, $400 from Brahms, and they would read these out. Basically, it was just a way to help the kids in the community, but also give businesses a boost. So you would see, hey, that uh, that new insurance company's coming in and putting on a bunch of bonuses, kind of like advertising, right? And that the, was the labor auction. No, that was the bonus auction. Now, the labor auction, which I don't know if they still do these, the labor auction, which let me just tell you, by the time I got to school, the name had changed to labor auction. I'll let your imagination oh God, go wild what it was called when my dad was a kid. But you would, volu- <laughs> you would basically volunteer your time and somebody would, quote, buy your time and you would have to work for them for eight hours. The money went to the organization of the club and then you were kind of the honorary like, hey, I'll come sweep your shop or serve ice cream or whatever for so many hours. And it was Again, a way for people to support the youth of the community, but also get advertising of like, oh, oh, do you see the uh, the straights are buying up a whole bunch of kids at the labor auction. Now we're going to buy hay from them, that kind of thing, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Again, called a labor auction when I was in school. Not this... called that as a youth, but that's, that's beside the point. I'm just trying to give context to Brahms. And a lot, of context, a lot of context you gave because that – started as you trying to tell a story about the third best burger you ate or something when <laughs> we're just, we're supposed to be talking about the fact that this Brahms <laughs> that was a fucking crazy tangent babe uh it's dawning on me just how crazy it was this is sent in by Tina Curry from k4.com and Brahms employees you know Brahms from that crazy story <laughs> that Erica just told Brahms <laughs> Brahms, who I'm hypothetically my ADHD medicine this morning. We're doing it so early. <laughs> Brahms, who hypothetically paid four hundred dollars for Erica's labor, the third best burger of her life. Employees discover a man sleeping in the ceiling on steel rafters. Now I'm going to go on a tangent really fast. This is yeah. important. I acted in like a quick short with some random guy, and you know we were flirting, mm-hmm. and somewhere in his flirtation, he was like, you know, I actually read this story recently about this guy who discovered a small woman no. was no. curling up and sleeping frogging? in what? They call it frogging. It's, it's curling up and sleeping in like the top shelf of his closet. No. Yeah. And so and he discovered it because so like he would go to work and then she would kind of come out and yeah. then he and then she'd be back in before he came home. And the way I was never like I just spent the next three to four years, honestly. Yeah. Like being like it, no boogeyman in my closet. Right. No, no, no. A small woman who can curl up small enough to sleep in there. But so that's yeah. kind of what was happening in this Brahms. Yeah. This guy was up in the rafters, and like all the cops were like, How is he not fallen down? Right. Like Through the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. Like, how is he? Because he's got to be on like a load bearing rafter. Right. Otherwise, he's going to go through the tiles right away. But he was just up there taking a nap and they just could not believe it. Google frogging. It's horrifying. But, you know, if I wanted to to hide, to throw people off, I might sleep in the ceiling of a business. Why am I Googling frogging? Because it's horrifying and it's people that live in other people's houses in like crawl spaces and all of those. And like, Oh, yeah. I'm not Googling that. I'm yeah, not going to Google that. I'm, I'm telling I'm my dear that. listeners, if you want to have a, a Halloween treat, Google frogging and then think about all the holes that could be in your house. Oh, God. Okay. No, go back to your wonderful transition that I interrupted. <laughs> From the NewYorkPost.com. <laughs> Wanted Florida man tried to throw cops off with a sign, I don't live here. Johnny Yates does not live here, read a dry erase board sign at the end of this guy's driveway. Can I give everyone a hot tip? If you ever come out to LA and you're like, man, I got to see that Hollywood sign and I got to see it close. Two options. You hike the specific trail at Griffith Park that takes you behind the Hollywood sign. That's Mm -hmm. as close as you're going to get. Or if you want to get a little bit, if you want to like get like the front view and you want to get as close as you can, just follow any sign 
in the hills of Hollywood that says, this road does not lead to Hollywood sign. Because guess where it's going to take you? Right to the Hollywood sign. <laughs> Bingo. That's immediately what I thought of when I read yeah. this. I was like, oh, it's like the Hollywood sign. <laughs> People in Malibu got sued basically because all the beaches in Malibu are, I believe they're all public. Yeah. All the coastlines public. But people, but you would have to walk through somebody's, you know, yard or alleyway or whatever, and not yard, but they're, you know, between houses, and they would put up their signs beach, that are like their beachfront, their beachfront, and they would say private property, no entry or whatever, and they all had to take those signs down because it was blocking access to the beach. You want a private beach? You go move to the OC, okay? Yeah, Malibu, that Me belongs though. to the people. And just so we clarify, he was caught and arrested and taken to jail. So, oh yeah, big time. So he had that sign. Johnny, Johnny. Yates does not. Johnny Yates does not live here. And the cops go, "Hey, you want to look there?" <laughs> and they definitely found him. He was hiding in a modified chest of drawers. Speaking of frogging, feels like uh, some uh, Scooby Doo. <laughs> yeah, some Scooby Doo yeah. tactics, you know, but. Man. And Scooby Doo, like, and like the chest of drawers is like shaking because he's like scared. <laughs> <laughs> and his little dog's like, quiet, man. And he's like, I'm hungry. Oh, Erica, yeah. I'm scared. Will you play an ad to make me feel better? Absolutely. Be comforted by the sponsors that bring you this podcast every week. Hey, baby trash cans, are you looking for a way to support Trashy Trashy and add to your wardrobe? Well, then look no further than the Trashy Trashy merch store. Head to TrashyTrashyPodcast.Threadless.com to see all our latest styles. Show the people at the gym who you really are by wearing our special Time Traveler t-shirt. Or how about cheering on the sidelines at your kid's next big game in a mama trash can ringer tee? I mean, Trashy Trashy isn't just a podcast. It's a lifestyle. Hey, we have that design. And Threadless even lets you put stuff on baby onesies, yoga mats, hoodies, and more. I mean, allegedly. Allegedly. <gasps> That's a design, too. It's trashy, trashy podcast.threadless.com. We love you. Love you. And we're back. Hey, Cass. What? You know, when we have our pre-production meeting for this podcast every every week. Lengthy. And we determine what stories we're putting on the dock and what stories just, you know, fell by the wayside. Uh huh. We often get in vicious arguments, fights, even knocked on, dragged down fights about it. This podcast has been horrible for our friendship. Terrific. But we do it for you, dear listeners. But we wanted to bring you <laughs> some of the stories that caused the bleeding and the bloodshed. And the anger and the viscosity between us. And, and and we just had to cut them. We just had to cut them. It was a compromise. We had to cut them. Like the women in Desperate Housewives where they all have to do their own photo shoots and cut those pictures together. <laughs> That's what we have to do, which is why we're never in photos together. It couldn't possibly be because we're too lazy to go <laughs> together. It's because we don't like each other and we mm -hmm. have to cut us together. So... We cut that. And we cut that. Desperate Housewives. Man, I am just proving my earlier point that I don't know <laughs> anything. When did Desperate Housewives go off the air? Like 2008? Housewives, Who knows? Housewives last season. Season eight. Yeah. When, though? When was it? Desperate Housewives last season when okay the desperate housewives finale aired may 13th 2012 i swear to god everything just turned off yeah after we have i'm gonna cut this rant from the messenger.com dozens of full portable toilets stolen from racetrack and are still missing please describe what full means is it full of waste or is it full of people are people missing <laughs> we can't we just I, can't we'll simply never know there's no, no way of knowing we had to cut that from boing boing.net man arrested for faking heart attack to avoid his dinner bill at more than 20 restaurants this sounds like a movie we had to cut that because Wait. oh my what? god I, we had to cut it obviously but there was a chuck palinuk book 
where a man would choke. It was called choke. And he would he would go to fancy restaurants and choke so people would save him. Oh Wasn't my god, it a I'm movie? Like, maybe they made it into a movie, but he would choke so people would save him and then they would get so much like happiness and satisfaction out of being like, I saved a man's life today. And that they would pay for his dinner and then like pay for his life, I think. It's just this is the movie uh, starring Sam Rockwell. Yes. Destitute sex addict fakes choking in expensive restaurants whose patrons save him, then fund his hospitalized mother's care. Yep. Yep. That's all right. Yep. That was the book. I, I, I went through a big Chuck Palahniuk phase. If you can believe it or not. Well, we had to cut that. We had to cut it. From whdh.com, Connecticut man who found bag of cash and claimed finders keepers pays back town and the felony charge was dropped. This is why you leave the country. Bring finders keepers to the Supreme Court. Like who's going to bring the case? I feel like finders keepers should should hold up. I just want to say that anyone who says possessions is two third of the law. I don't think that that's true. And I don't think they know that. I think that they're just saying that. And like it sounds like they heard someone else say it. Like, but there's just like it no way that nine tenths of the law or something. Yeah, yeah like it's, yeah. it's always something different Some depending fraction. on the level of <laughs> asshole you're dealing with. Well, I think if, if you find somebody else's cash, finders keepers doesn't apply. But if you have like eight kilos of coke on you and you're like, I just found it, it's finders keepers applies. You know, I feel like real wishy washy on the laws there. Yeah selective selective <laughs> but we cut that yeah we, we're not taking to the supreme court from ndtv.com u.s man arrested for dumping water on brother's head during arguments his brother had eaten a piece of his brother had eaten a piece of pie he was saving for later and then an argument ensued we can't turn brother against brother on this podcast we cover a lot of people getting stabbed maimed killed over you know pies and <laughs> things like that so it was just important that we cut this one i think more what i'm hearing is more pie if there were more pie to go around less violence would bust out what's your favorite kind of pie mm. strawberry slow. cream strawberry cream pie from... i said too slow Fuck. i'm just kidding you can tell me <laughs> strawberry cream pie from house of pies that's nice yeah what is yours i don't know i like them all <laughs> She likes them all. I'm, I, yeah, I don't know. Cream pie. I, I have a strange relationship with pie because, as much as it pains me to say, I'm kind of a cake girl. <gasps> Erica, come on. We can't talk about this. This isn't pastry, pastry. Are you ready? For what? What do you think? Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. It's time for the dumpster fire of the week. <laughs> I'm glad we brought up the law earlier because we got a story from the New York Post about a fake lawyer in Kenya. Okay, I feel like we could do this. It's they a hundred percent. I was gonna <laughs> suggest it to you. I had a feeling that that's why it became the dumpster fire. I was like, oh, because this could be us yeah. on a different timeline. Yeah. So NewYorkPost.com fake lawyers arrested in Kenya including one of them who's described as a brilliant con artist, and he won 26 straight cases. Like, so, don't you become a lawyer I'm after sorry, that? You, yeah, you win. Okay, like, he like at this point, you just swear him in, right? Like, I, he's he's nailing it. He, he's doing good. He, he's a lawyer. <laughs> saved a man from death row and got somebody off from a pie-stealing case. Like, I don't know what the cases were, but, like, to me, <laughs> you win 26 in a row, you a lawyer. No, I mean, that's how it works in any other situation of like, oh, this guy won 26 boxing matches in a row. Well, yeah, of course he did. He's a boxer. And people are allowed to represent themselves in court. Right. But then all of a sudden, if you want someone else to represent you, they have to like, quote, pass the bar. Absurd. If this guy's nailing it. So it's a pair of people mm -hmm. who are just like a super team of fake lawyers. Yeah. They know more than just pirate law. And that's all we specialize in. You yeah. So the, the law firm of, of Carter and Cardenas. Carter. That's not my last name. 
I was like, how sweet. <laughs> he would take mine, obviously. You come to the law firm of Curry and Cardenas. Oh, we gonna get you off on a pirate case. That's all we have. That's this all we was, have. This guy was doing all sorts of law. I'm di- so yeah. the Law Society of Kenya Nairobi Branch Rapid Action Team. That's a mouthful. Arrested this con artist attorney after they received tips that he did not have a law license. Stitches get sn- s- snitches get stitches, bitches. Like who's snitching on this guy? Probably someone who's ass got handed to them in court they said that guy's not even a real lawyer so i'd they be didn't... mortified if i lost to that he'd achieved something of a folk hero status in certain corners of the east Caf- african country after coverage of his ruse elicited everything from outrage to amusement and someone from Kenya Central Organization of Trade Unions reportedly praised him as a brilliant lo- young mind who has succeeded without traditional qualifications so like maybe we need to change like i have to mention assume that law school in Kenya is probably expensive because law school Everywhere that doesn't have free, co- I don't know anything about Kenya college. I shouldn't even guess, but it's expensive in America. So I'm kind of like, if you can learn it, why, why bother? And to me, that's like that, that young man that was posing as a doctor. Why are we going to criminalize people that are doing that? And like, I understand there's like a way to well, do it, but that I'm like, then send that young man to to doctor school. Like, put him to medical school. Like, you know what? Like, give this man the opportunity to pass the bar without having to do all the schooling and whatnot. And like, he, I don't know. Like, somebody, and there's a clip online, and and they're like, listen, all these detectors, you're nimcompoops. He hasn't killed anyone. He's not a terrorist. He's just out there kicking your ass without doing traditional school. Now that's me editorializing that side. His his quote ended with not a terrorist. But interestingly, the example that you gave is now making me almost think to change my position. Oh, no. So when you have a young buck come on Master Chef, those are home chefs, of course. And Gordon Ramsay says, you know, you're getting sent home, but I believe in you so much I'm gonna send you to culinary school. Like I think that's what you're talking about right now. But I have to say <laughs> I don't want to be seen by a doctor or receive any medical advice from someone who's not been to medical school. I think there's too much of that already happening on Instagram and stuff. Sure. A medical thing. Yeah. I understand. So now you say that, I'm like, damn. Okay. So here's the thing. He's a fake lawyer and he won 26 cases, which is kind of like, okay, so he's crushing it. But like, who's to blame if you lose a case that maybe you weren't guilty of? You or your fake lawyer, because you're the one who hired the fake. See, now it's getting kind of muddy and less complicated or more complicated than Mm -hmm. it was before. And Mm -hmm. I don't like that. Why did you do that to me, Erica? Why did you bring up something that was going to make me think rather than just playfully saying (laughs) that this guy's real? Nuance. There's just nuance in every situation. And like, to me, I I don't know. I loved it an old television show. I'm not advising you to go watch it. I'm just saying critically, I thought it was an interesting concept based off a book, I believe, but it was called Bored to Death. And he was a unlicensed PI. And that's how he advertised himself. Like, hey, you could get a real, you know, private investigator, or you could get me who's advertising on Craigslist. And as long I think if if in the future, moving forward, as long as he's just like, hey, I'm not credentialed, but I can represent you i think it's fine that's fair that's when fair. he goes to law school passes the bar then he'll be licensed but i'm just saying we should stop criminalizing these amateurs and these these you know they're trying and they're doing a good job a savant a, a, savant. a law savant speaking of nuance what mm. are you hoarding i'm hoarding Oops. buy nothing groups and buy nothing hold on app. hold on yeah. start over my computer yeah. made it always on accident. I'm hoarding buy nothing groups and apps. I'm a part of my local buy nothing group where people will post sometimes incredible things, sometimes half a bag of Oreos. And you're like, okay, but the purpose is to try to use within the community, recycle, reuse, rather than just throwing something away or donating it so it ends up in a landfill. I've got incredible things. I've given incredible things away. Recently, I got a vintage wool coat, bright blue, beautiful blue 
with a huge patch on the back. It is, inc- it's like a peacoat link. It is incredible. Now, does it fit? Of course not. But it was from the <laughs> Buy Nothing group and it's just a beautiful piece. Now, am I a monster and that probably could have gone to somebody that needed a winter coat? Sure, but I needed it. And I, it's just a really, re- there's, there's national groups, there's local groups, there's neighborhood groups, there's an app even. I think it's a really great program and purpose. And so look up Buy Nothing in your area. I just think it's, it's you know, there's no central organization. It's just kind of a general good vibes and you trust people. But I think it's great. I'm also going to say, check out Poshmark for user Iconic Erica. I got some great wares up on there. Oh, that's a self-ad, okay? That's tagging. A, that's a self-ad, okay? At Iconic that's Erica. Right. Poshmark. I got some great uses. Now, I put the picture of the coat up there. It's not for sale. Oh. It's not for sale. I better not see that coat that you just talked about Girl, getting for free. <laughs> it ain't for sale, but I put it on there just so people know the quality of things I have to offer. Got so, it. Now, what are you hoarding? Trail mix. Oh, now what's what's your mix? Well, trail mix, I believe, is the greatest thing to happen to quote health foods Mm -hmm. since that child molester lost weight eating Subway. So you mean to tell me (laughs) that I can eat an entire bag of M&Ms and some salty sweet raisins and all I have to do is eat a few almonds and peanuts? As long as you're on a mountain, you can eat it. (laughs) Sign my ass up. (laughs) If you've ever shared (laughs) trail mix with me, it is me picking out the raisins and M and M's, or chocolate chip cookies, and then leaving you with a bag of nuts. <laughs> I got some. We very generously were given tickets to go see Death Cab for Cutie and the Postal Service uh, when they're in town just now in LA for the Hollywood Bowl, and we needed. To, we're like, let's bring some snacks, and so I got trail mix for like the first time in I don't know a thousand years. And I was like, oh, this this sounds awesome right now. And I was intentionally like getting handfuls and being like, yo, I need to start making a dent in these almonds and peanuts or otherwise there's just not going to be any left. Or like it's all that that's all that's yeah. going to be left. I was yeah. getting so many M&Ms and raisins, which I was <laughs> loving. But I was also like, I have to pretend here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think the density doesn't like line up after a while. And, but I mean, is trail mix considered healthy? I feel like it's with the healthy foods and they make like the, oh, here's an individual pack that Mm -hmm. you can buy from Costco, buy a hundred of them and give to your children as a healthy snack. That's the equivalent of giving them a box of raisins, maybe like a full size pack of M&Ms and then, yeah, like a couple like shitty peanuts. It's awesome. It's great. It's it's the biggest ruse since, you know, vitamins and supplements. It's unregulated. You can call anything trail mix. I could put steak in a bag and call it a trail mix if I eat it on the trail. Wow. Wow. Good points. Hey, what are you throwing out? Have I already thrown out four-way stops in California? I don't think so. <laughs> All right. Maybe I'm throwing out four-way stops because like most what? things should be a roundabout, but it's the education around four-way stops. Okay. I I, I was taught the proper way to approach it, right? I feel like Mm -hmm. it's just willy-nilly whenever somebody wants to go here. There's no rhyme or reason to it. There's no, we all go around the, you know, it just feels like people don't know how to do the four-way stop. And I'm the asshole sitting there doing it the right way. And I end up just sitting and sitting and sitting because, again, I'm doing it the right way and no one else is. I just and and I've got we've gotten more roundabouts, which are great, and I think more of those should happen. But at certain okay. intersections, it's just a four way stop and nobody knows what to do. I would put a hundred dollars on the idea that at least three out of four of you all think, well, I'm the only one doing this right. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Probably. Probably, yeah. I mean, sure, is a roundabout great? Yes, you know, how European of you. But I take a four-way stop over only one having a stop sign because people park so close to the co- like to the yeah. curb and like the edge that like I can't see who's coming. But hey, to each their own, you know? It's all about nuance, like we said. 
it's all about nuance. It's it's just it's nuance. That's all. It, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, what are you gonna do? Anyway, what are you throwing away? Well, you've heard me throw away stickers on credit cards. <laughs> but have you heard? <laughs> but have you heard me throw away stickers on picture frames? Ooh, on glass. What the fuck, yeah. you guys? Like, <laughs> literally, what the fuck? Picture frames come one of two ways, typically. They come, well, I don't know. Actually, I haven't bought a ton of picture frames. But they typically, I think the ones that I have right now yeah. are within a cardboard shell. Yeah. You know, like a little little cardboard on yeah. all four of the corners and a cardboard back Yeah, that gives information. Why the fuck isn't the price tag on the fucking cardboard? Mm -hmm. Why is it on the glass that I have to now peel off with such precision or I'm just going to have some dusty, sticky square on my art yeah. for eternity? Yeah. What? And the other way that a picture frame could come, I feel like I've seen, is it where the whole thing is wrapped in plastic. Ooh. Which... Uh. Put the sticker on that, I guess. Yeah. But like, just, what are we doing, what are Home we, Goods? What are we doing? What are we doing? Why did you put that there? Yeah. Why? It can go anywhere else. Is it, does, is that what's going to prevent theft? Sure. No, it's not. I'll, I'll be, I'll tell you right here. It's not going to prevent theft. You're just being a fucking butthole. It's, I, uh, it, you know, I feel like we're teaming up for a collaboration with Goo Gone. Wow. You know, I'm just saying, I, I feel like we could be, you know, perfect partners for like a Goo Gone type thing. I mean, yes. Although, like, if that's how it has to go, then that's how it has to go. Mm -hmm. I would like to fight for a better America where this stuff doesn't happen. But yes, if, sure. you know, like it's, if you can't beat them, join them. So yes, I would collab with Gugan because I have no choice. Yeah. You, I mean, your back's against the wall. And now that your back's against the wall, Cassandra, what wall is that? And where, where can we find you, Cassandra? I'm actually going to be doing stand up at Camp Crystal Lake. Mm. I don't know. I was probably going to stay there. You think you think I shouldn't? Do you think it's anything could go wrong? Beautiful this time of year. Yeah, my friend, uh, my friend and her son actually since sent, sent, they go there. It's it's great. Yeah, he's okay. Cool. They have like a groundskeeper that kind of is giving yeah. me like a bit of a vibe. Yeah, but that's fine, right? Yeah. Well, my 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 friend's sending her son there to learn how to swim, so you'll be fine. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah? Okay, okay. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, where can people find you? And more importantly, where can they find this podcast? Not more importantly, but kind of. Sorry. <laughs> you can find me at Iconic Erica Curry on Instagram, on Instagram, TikTok, Threads, Blue Sky, Spill, all the things. You can find me at Iconic Erica on Poshmark. But more importantly, the thing, you can find this podcast at TrashyTrashyPodcast.com where you can email us in a story, find links outward to things, tell us why you're trash. We have a merch store, which is trashytrashypodcast.threadless.com. We are on Trashy Trashy Pod at Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Threads, Blue Sky. And most importantly, you can find us for ad-free episodes at patreon.com slash trashy trashy podcast. In your feeds this week, there will also be our recap of episode three of The Golden Bachelor, which will be one of the promotions, the benefits you can find on our Patreon. Levels start at $1.99 a month. And when you become a Patreon, you'll get a specialized URL where you will have a separate feed, bonus episodes, ad-free episodes, recaps. There's multiple levels. So you can sign up at patreon.com trashy trashy podcast. That's and what did I say last time that the first five, first five, get a fanfic from Cassandra. First five Patreon, you're going to get, yeah, I'm going to write some fan fiction about you that I'm going to read on the podcast. And as always, you can share this podcast, hit the three dots in your app and click the up arrow, share this podcast with a friend, with a coworker, with hell, if you get pulled over a police officer, just share this podcast with them. When they say uh, license and identification, just say, <laughs> Okay. And share the podcast with the cop. 
No, I don't know what's going to happen. We're not lawyers, but I just no. think, you know, it's a way to share it. If you're, if you're going 90 to 55, share the Trashy Trashy podcast with the officer, and it might get you out of a million-dollar ticket. 55. Hey, Cass. What's going on, girl? Stay garbage. You stay garbage, girl. I will. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Hey.